Hello everyone! So in the past, I've made spring and fall season themed crochet videos, so I thought I would do a winter one as well. This one also includes some Valentine's Day themed pieces in case you wanted to make anything that's Valentine's themed. And everything in this video is super easy and versatile no matter what kind of style that you have. Towards the end of the video, I also show how I style the pieces with my everyday outfits and hopefully that can inspire you for yours as well. So without further ado, let's get started. To create this cute fluffy scarf, I'll be using this big blanket fluffy yarn, but you can also use any other velvet yarn. What you're going to do to start is first create a slip knot and chain 25. After chaining 25, work double crochets into each stitch until the end of the row. Once you reach the end of the row, chain 2 and turn your work. You're going to continue working double crochets down the entire project for a total of 78 rows. If you want to create stripes like I did, you'll work one color for a total of 6 rows before switching to the second color. To switch to a new color, first finish the 6th row. Then, instead of chaining 2 like the previous rows, take your new color and loop it onto your hook and pull it through the loop. This counts as one chain. Chain 1 with your new color and then turn your work. As you start working with your new color, pick a side where you want the outside of the scarf to be. Then, when you're weaving in your old color ends, you'll weave them into the opposite side so that they don't show on the outside of the scarf. I weave them in by holding them in front of the stitches and then work double crochets around them, which traps them inside the stitches. After a couple of stitches, I cut the tails off and then work the row normally. You're going to then work 5 more rows of that color before switching to the first color. Repeat the process of adding the new color, weaving in the old color, and working 6 rows until you finish row 78. After finishing row 78, chain 1, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. Then your scarf is done. You can leave it as it is, but I wanted to make it a bit more Valentine's Day themed, so I decided to add hearts and tassels to the scarf. To create the tassels, all I did was cut long tails that were around 14 inches long. You want them to be double the length you want since they will be folded in half soon. Once you cut as many tassels as you want, or you can cut them as you go, I took three tassels and then pushed them into the bottom stitches of the end of the scarf with my fingers and then tied them together once. That's all I did, and it's very simple to do. Thank you. 
For the heart tassels, take a weight 4 velvet yarn or just any weight 4 yarn and create a magic circle. After creating the magic circle, chain 2. Then what you're going to do is create three treble crochets into the magic circle. To do this, wrap the yarn around the hook twice, insert the hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two, three times. After you finish your three treble crochets, you will create four double crochets into the magic circle. After the double crochets, create three more treble crochets into the magic circle. After you finish 3 treble crochets, 4 double crochets, and 3 more treble crochets, slip stitch into the magic circle. Then pull the tail to close the gap in the middle. This creates the tiny little heart. Now you're going to chain 15. After chaining 15, cut the yarn and pull to secure. To attach the heart tassel to the scarf, all you're going to do is take the tail of the heart chain and wrap it inside the stitch and then tie it like normal. Continue creating tassels and heart tassels until every stitch is filled. There's no pattern or anything that I did when adding the tassels, I just added them where I saw fit. For this large heart here for the bottom of the scarf, I used a pattern that I will link in the description box below. Once you've created that heart, chain one and cut a long tail as you will need that long tail to sew the heart onto the scarf. To sew the heart onto the scarf without it showing on the back, first choose a spot you want the heart to be. Once you've chosen the spot, place the heart onto the spot and take your tail end of the heart and insert it into your tapestry needle. You're then going to take the tapestry needle and push it under the closest stitch without going through the back. Each stitch has two loops, so you're only going to be working into the front loops, not the back. Then pull the yarn through and take your tapestry needle and work into the heart edges. You're going to sew back and forth until you reach the beginning of the heart. Once you finish sewing the heart, you're going to work into the middle of the heart and pull through in random places around the heart, making sure not to let it go through the back of the scarf. Then cut the tails off and you're done. To start the ribbed hand warmers, first create a slip knot and chain 30. After you chain 30, work one half double crochet into each stitch. Also, I'm using a weight 5 yarn and a 6mm hook, but you can do this with weight 4 yarn and a 5mm hook as well.
Once you reach the end of the row, chain one and turn your work. From now on, you'll be working into the back loop only. So in the back loop, work normal half double crochets. Do this until the end of the row. Once you reach the end of the row, chain one and turn your work. You're going to repeat working back loop only half double crochets for each row until you reach row 13 or until the hand warmer comfortably fits around your hand. Once you reach row 13, what you're going to do is place the hand warmer on and around your hand to figure out where your thumb begins to poke out. I would recommend placing stitch markers at the places where your thumb begins and where it ends so you know how wide the hole for the hand warmer should be. For mine in particular, I put the stitch markers on the 16th stitch and the 20th stitch if you count the stitches from the bottom. After figuring out where the thumb hole will be, align the two sides together and slip stitch the hand warmer until you reach the first stitch marker. Then chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. You're going to attach your yarn to the second stitch marker and continue slip stitching down until the hand warmer is completely sewed together. Then at the end of the row, chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. After, weave in all your ends, then turn your hand warmer inside out, and then you're done. There's two more versions of hand warmers that I will show you, but they are very similar. The only difference is that one has a ribbed cuff at the bottom and the other doesn't. If you want arm warmers with a ribbed cuff, you're first going to create a slip knot and chain five. If you want the ribbed cuff to be longer, then chain to however long you want it to be. After chaining five, you're going to work half double crochets down the entire chain row. Once you reach the end of the row, chain one and turn your work. From now on, you'll be working in the back loop only. So for each stitch, work one half double crochet into the back loop only. Once you get to the end of the row, chain one, turn your work, and repeat this step until the ribbed cuff wraps around your wrist comfortably. For mine, I did a total of 13 rows. After completing 13 rows, connect both sides together and slip stitch them together. At the end of the slip stitch row, chain one. You're now gonna be working in the round to create the rest of the hand warmer. If you're working with one color only, I recommend using a stitch marker to remember the start of the row so that when you're working the rounds, your hand warmer doesn't shrink. When you're ready to work on the first row of the body, work one single crochet into every area you can, creating stitches as you go along. At the end of the row, slip stitch into the first stitch you created. If you're doing one single color, you can chain one and turn your work to continue working. But if you're adding a new color, first loop the new color on your hook and pull it through the slip stitch loop. Then turn your work and you're ready to begin the second row. 
One important thing to mention is that if you're wanting to weave in your ends as you go, it's important to weave it onto the same side because the hand warmers will be turned inside out after to hide the seam. So if you want the side that it's on now to be the outside, weave in the ends on the inside. You're going to keep working single crochet rows for a total of 18 rows. On row 19, you're going to add the thumb hole to the hand warmer. To do this, first place the hand warmer on the opposite hand that you want the hand warmer to be on. So if you want to wear it on your left hand, use your right hand to measure, just so that the seam can be on the bottom of your hand and not on the top. When the hand warmer is on your hand, take two stitch markers and place the stitch markers on both sides of your thumb gap. This helps indicate where the thumb hole will be. Take the hand warmer off and begin single crocheting until you reach the first stitch marker. When you reach the first stitch marker, work a normal single crochet into the stitch marker stitch and then chain the amount of stitches that are in between the stitch markers. For me, it was 4 stitches, so I'm going to chain 4. After chaining the amount you need, single crochet into the stitch marker stitch and then continue working the row as normal. On row 20, work single crochets normally down the row until you reach the thumb hole chain. On the chain, all you're going to do is work one single crochet into each chain like normal stitches and then finish the row. You're going to continue working your rows until your hand warmer passes your knuckles. For me, I did a total of 22 rows. When you finish the last row, slip stitch into the first stitch to end the row like usual, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. then weave in your ends. When you're done weaving in your ends, turn the glove inside out and you're done. If you don't want to cuff on your hand warmers, the only difference is how you start the hand warmer. To start your hand warmer, create a slip knot and chain 20. Once you reach chain 20, take your chain and slip stitch it into the first stitch to join in the round, making sure the chain isn't twisted. After joining the round, chain 1 and work 1 single crochet into each stitch. Once you've reached the end of the row, slip stitch into the first stitch. If you're switching colors, loop the new color onto your hook and pull it through. If not, just chain one. Then you're going to turn your work and work normal single crochets for the rest of the body of the hand warmer the same way you do with the ribbed cuff hand warmer. To add cute details to your hand warmer, you can add different types of appliques, ribbons, etc. For my heart hand warmers, I created the same heart used in the scarf section of the tutorial and then sewed it onto the top. For the large star on my purple hand warmers, first create a magic circle. After creating the magic circle, chain 2 and double crochet into the magic circle 15 times. After finishing 15 stitches, pull the yarn in to close the gap in the middle. After it is closed, slip stitch into the first stitch. Then you're going to chain 5. This is going to be the first leg of the star. What you're going to do for each leg is first single crochet into the second stitch of the chain. then half double crochet into the next stitch.
After that, do a double crochet into the next stitch. And a treble crochet into the last stitch. You're then going to skip two stitches and slip stitch into the third stitch. After slip stitching into the third stitch, you're going to chain five once more and create the second leg of the star. So again, first single crochet into the second stitch of the chain, then half double crochet into the next stitch. After that, do a double crochet into the next stitch. And for the last stitch, add a treble crochet. Continue this pattern for three more legs. Once you finish the star legs, slip stitch into the first star leg. Chain one, cut a long tail of yarn and pull the secure. To sew the star onto the hand warmer, I first try the hand warmer on to see where exactly I want the star to be. When I'm happy with the area of my choice, I take the hand warmer off and all I do is take the long tail in my tapestry needle and push it through the middle of where I want the star to be. Then I just start sewing in and out around the star, making sure not to go through both sides of the hand warmer. I go into each stitch of the star back and forth until I reach where I began sewing the star. Once I reach the beginning, I stitch the tapestry needle into the inside of the hand warmer again, and then weave the ends on the inside. Then it's complete. To create a cute bow with stars at the end, first we need to create a drawstring. To create a drawstring, first create a slip knot and chain 50. After chaining 50, cut the yarn and pull it to secure. Then take your tapestry needle and the chain and insert the tail from the chain into the darning needle. Then insert it into the part of the hand warmer you want the bow to be. And that's it! To create the star, first create a magic circle. Now, chain one. What you're going to do now is single crochet into the magic circle. Then a double crochet. Then chain two. And after, do a double crochet. This creates one leg of the star. You're going to repeat this four more times to create the star. So again, first do a single crochet into the magic circle, then a double crochet. After, chain two and do one more double crochet.
that's the second leg. You're going to repeat this three more times. Once you finish all the legs of the stars, single crochet into the magic circle and then pull the yarn at the beginning of the magic circle to close the large gap. Once it's closed, slip stitch into the first stitch of the row. I like my chain to be at the tip of the star leg, so I slip stitch into the next two stitches until it's on the tip of the star. Then chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure, making sure to leave a tail to weave the star onto the bow. To add the star onto the bow, first take your tapestry needle and add the tail from the star into the tapestry needle. Then insert your tapestry needle through the front of the drawstring. After, turn the star around and weave the end into the back of the star. Then take the tail of the drawstring and weave that into the back of the star as well. And then cut off all the tails. And that's how you attach your star. Now your hand warmer is complete and super cute. To create a cap beanie, first chain 66. This chain works for my head circumference, which is 21 inches, but make sure that the chain works for your head by wrapping it around your head. It shouldn't be too tight, but make sure it's not too loose either. Once you chain the amount you need, slip stitch into the first stitch of the chain to join in the round, making sure that the chain is even and not twisted. After the chain is connected, chain two, and you can begin working on the cat beanie. For the first row, you're gonna work double crochets into each stitch until you get to the end of the row. Once you reach the end of the row, keep in mind that this last stitch here is not a stitch. If you work into this stitch, your cat beanie will get wider and it won't fit properly, so skip that stitch and slip stitch into the first stitch of the row. I would recommend adding a stitch marker into the chain stitch to remember where the first stitch of the row is. Now you can either continue if you're making a solid color beanie, but if you wanted to add a new color, take the new color and loop it around your hook before pulling it through. This counts as your first chain. Chain one with the new color and turn your work. Work double crochets down the row with your new color, making sure to weave in your ends as you go. If not, you can weave them in later. Once you get to the end of the row, skip that last chain space again and instead work a slip stitch into the first stitch of the row. You can either continue like normal with a chain two and then turn your work or add a new color, chain one, and then turn your work. When I'm weaving in my old yarn, I alternate between weaving them in in the front and the back every row since I'm turning my work and it changes the sides that the weave parts are at. You're going to continue to double crochet each row normally until you finish your 11th row. After you finish your 11th row, slip stitch into the first stitch, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. To make the cat ear part of the beanie, you're going to slip stitch the first row you've done onto the beanie together. Because the chain row is tight, it makes it perfect to be the top of the hat instead of the bottom. Align the sides together of the beanie and pull your yarn through the first end of the beanie.
Then slip stitch down the entire row. At the end, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. Your cat beanie is complete. Now it's time to add the side flaps onto it. What you're going to do first is put the beanie on and figure out where you want the flaps to be. I preferred them to be close to the sides of my eyes and then ending past my ears. To remember where these places are, take a stitch marker and place them onto all four spaces you choose, making sure the spaces are even in the front and the sides. For my cat beanie, I had a total of eight spaces in between the stitch marker stitches. Once the stitch markers are in the places you want them to be, attach your yarn to the first stitch marker on either side to begin the flaps. Work half double crochets or single crochets if you want the stitches to be tighter together and work down until you finish working into the second stitch marker stitch. Then you're going to chain one and turn your work. Work two more rows of regular half double crochets. On the fourth row, what you're going to do is skip the first stitch, then work the rest of the row with normal half double crochets. This creates a decrease in your ear flap. On the next row, don't do any decreases. Here is a little pattern that I followed for the decreases. Right now, you're on row 6, so you will skip the first stitch to decrease and finish the row normally. Then for the next row, you will work the entire row with no decreases. You will do this until there are 2 stitches left. When there are 2 stitches left on row 17, skip the first stitch, work a half double crochet into the second stitch, and then chain 13. After chaining 13, cut the yarn and pull to secure. Repeat this on the other side of the beanie. When you're done with both flaps, weave in all your ends and then turn your hat inside out. You can stop here if you want, but if you want to add any cute details to the ends of the drawstrings, you can do that. You can use the star tutorial and the heart tutorial that I showed earlier in the video, but if you want, you can also add pom-poms to the end. To create pom-poms, first wrap the yarn you want to use over your hand until the size is good enough for you. For me, I wrapped it around my hand 40 times. After, cut a long tail off and then wrap it over the gap like this, and then under before tying it to the beginning of the gap like this. Then take the other tail and do the same. After, pull it tightly to create a dent in the middle. Grab your scissors and cut the loops until there are all strings poking out.
Then take one of the ends and insert it into a tapestry needle. Insert the tapestry needle into the end of the drawstring you want the pom-pom to be on and pull it through. Then insert the darning needle into the pom-pom a couple of times in different areas to make sure it's secure in the pom-pom. Repeat this with the other tails, making sure to pull the tails through different areas of the pom-pom. Once all the tails are weaved in, take your scissors and start giving your pom-pom a haircut. Make sure you have a tissue or something that can catch the yarn that you cut since it could get messy. It's best to start cutting small pieces at a time instead of too much so you won't have any regrets on cutting off more than you intended. Once you get it looking like you want, your pom-pom is done. To make a chunky cat beanie, here's a quick pattern of what I did differently. I chained 34 and worked 7 rows of double crochet for the base of the beanie. I then slip stitched the first row closed so that could be the top of the hat. And for the side flaps, I made each flap have 4 stitches in between each of the stitch marker stitches, the same way I did the smaller cat beanie in the previous tutorial. And for the ends of the flaps, I just added 2 stars to it using the exact pattern as the stars in the hand warmer tutorial portion of the video. So I thought it would be fun to show how I use these pieces to accessorize my outfits. So for this first outfit, I kept the whole red, white, and pink theme to go through the whole fit with the exception of my brown coat. I also added a red scarf that I made with my knitting machine, which I'll have a tutorial on very soon. I think my favorite part of this outfit is definitely the hand warmers and the scarf. It's also winter time, so the outfit was very cozy and warm and perfect for a casual Valentine's Day outfit. This next outfit is probably my favorite because the cat beanie was really chunky and the arm warmers were really chunky since I used chunky yarn for both of them and it was just so cozy. The sweater that I'm wearing is incredibly warm and the color scheme all flows perfectly together and I think these hand warmers are my favorite out of all of the ones that we did in the video so far and this is also my favorite cat beanie. I added little stars to the end of the cat beanie as well which just kind of adds some cute little detail to the outfit. This outfit was definitely perfect for winter because of how chunky the scarf is and my long thick teddy bear coat. I don't think I can express just how warm this scarf is and I would definitely recommend making it for winter especially if you live in an area where it gets extremely cold. The hand warmers were a different color than the scarf but I think it still paired nicely with the overall color scheme of the outfit. The heart detailing on the scarf also worked nicely and just made everything cute overall. This last outfit is more in the darker color scheme which I truly love personally. The quality of this video has been decreasing by the way because it was getting darker outside so excuse all of the green on the video but I love this outfit. It's very chill and casual and I added a face mask because I'd definitely be wearing it outside with this frigid weather and it pairs nicely with the rest of the outfit. I thought the black cat beanie with its heart details on the bottom paired perfectly with my mushroom coat and my mushroom earrings which was also a tiny detail that I added last minute. The scarf brings everything together and makes a cute casual winter outfit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorials in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!